I had a couple of users ask me about my method of converting analog videotapes to digital copies. Even though, actually, those comments were technically on the DCR HC 20A video, which is mini DV, which technically is digital. The fact of the matter is that I was requested to make a video about my method of converting videotapes in general to videos that are playable on my computer and videos that are in 60 frames per second. So that's what this video is going to be about. Before I begin, there's a couple of videos that I want to recommend you watch by two of my current favorite YouTube content creators. One is by this guy named Technology Connections. He made a video and he showcased uh, his method of analog to digital conversion. It's basically he buys a composite to HDMI upscaler and then an HDMI capture card and it's running a little bit expensive. Not that my method is going to be any less expensive. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll put a link to that video and then the other video I'm going to mention in the description so you can watch it for yourself and take a look at what you think. Each method I'm going to talk about in this video has its own virtues and its own disadvantages, so be aware of that. There's like, there's a couple of things uh, that you might find appealing about a specific method, and then if so, that's the one you should go with. And then another one is from this guy named V Westlife, and his video showcased a device that I actually have right here, and I'm gonna. I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but I'm going to be echoing probably a lot of points that he made in this video, so I'll put a link to this in the description as well, and you can watch this video and you'll be... He goes a little bit more in depth about these devices than I'm going to. So depending on what type of videotapes you have, there's a couple of different methods that you might want to use for importing videos. If you have a lot of Hi8 tapes or Video8 tapes, then you might want to consider buying a Sony Handycam digital 8 model that is capable of playing back such tapes. Those are kind of hard to find on eBay. There's the most common model I believe is the DCR TRV 460 and the DCR TRV 480, but there's a couple more digital 8 models. I know the DCR TRV 350 and the 351 can also play back digital 8 or video 8 and high 8 tapes. So those are some other models to look out for. If I can find it, I'm going to put a list in the, the, in the description of various models that are capable and not capable of playing back those types of tapes. And then the DCR HC28 being a mini DV camera, it makes things easier. Any digital 8 camera makes things easier because uh, the way that those formats work is you just plug them into a computer through the firewire. This is part one of my very convoluted method importing videotapes. It's the computer. This is pretty much the main reason, one of two main reasons why I haven't made a video about this is because it's kind of a specific computer setup. So what I, what I need to do this is a computer with Windows Vista and a FireWire port because Windows Vista has this feature called the Import Video Wizard. When you plug a camera through the FireWire into the computer and then you turn the camera on, the import video wizard will open. And you can see here it is, it popped up here. You can give it a title, tell it where to import, and the format, you, should, you need to go with AVI. It's very important that you do AVI if for some reason you're able to follow through with all of this. And I'll tell you why when we get to deinterlacing. If you need mini DV tapes imported, this is a pretty decent method of doing so. Part two to this, this is where the analog part comes in. You're going to want a Sony Handycam that has the AV pass-through feature, which is basically you plug an analog source into, into the 3.5mm jack, and then it will take that analog source and convert it to a digital stream into the computer. This is a Sony DCR PC110. There's a couple of Sony models that are able to do the AV pass-through feature thingamajig. They're a little bit hard to find. I found this one at a computer store for like 40 bucks. This was like a $1,000 camera when it came out, maybe more. And that can be done by the way of a typical composite cable plugged into this Toshiba VCR here. Very reliable, by the way. This is a great VCR. It's a Toshiba... SD KV550SU 
And then we go back to the import video wizard, click next. And then you get three options. It says import the entire videotape to my computer, um, which is typically what you might want to do if you don't really need to segment your video into little pieces. So probably for like mini DV and digital eight, that's something you might want to consider doing. Import the entire videotape and then burn it to a DVD. D don't bother with that, it's useless. DVDs suck. Import only parts of the videotape to my computer. This is one is the crucial one for this method at least in my opinion it is. So it's going to show you this little thing here and it has the digital video camera controls. This isn't going to work if you're not importing it directly from the video camera because there's not a tape in it. Start video import, the elapsed time, the file size, the file space you have left. So we're going to click start video import and it's a blank screen right now because the VCR isn't playing anything but I have a videotape in here and when I press play on the VCR the analog signal will go out to the video camera. You can see right there. And then it's getting streamed into the computer. And it's lagging right now just because it's a, it's a preview. And this method, as far as quality loss goes, is pretty good. Um, I noticed that the video does tend to turn out a little bit more pale in comparison to how it shows up on this monitor and on the viewfinders on some of my cameras, the ones with color viewfinders at least. And that's where the method in Technology Connections video is probably a little bit better because it does preserve that color a lot better. So if you're interested in absolute 100% lossless, that's probably as close as you're going to get. But as far as this is concerned, this works very well for me. So really quick, I'm going to touch on the my experience with the EasyCap device. Um, I bought this at an estate sale for like $10. You can get these on eBay for like $10, you can get these on Amazon for like $10. If you want to go with a company that you can probably trust a little bit more than both of those, B&H has a version of this for like 30 some odd dollars. Basically what this is, is it's just a USB capture card. You just plug it right into your computer and the software comes on a disc, you open that up and it gives you your preview window and some controls for recording the video and whatnot. And then you just plug it into an analog source. Uh, the imported videos on this device do not work well with the deinterlacing program that I've used. And I don't know if that's specific to this one or all of the EasyCap devices. It's probably just this one. So be warned, that's something you might run into. The program that came with this unit also did not work well with my EVGA GTX 960. When I would open it up, it would just be a white screen and I could not see a preview at all and it didn't work. Unless I turned off my graphics card in the device manager. I have a GTX 1060 now and that doesn't happen so again just be warned that's something you might run into. And so now let's make believe that we're finished importing our video and then we click finish and boom there it is right there. What I would do from this point is I would take this video and throw it onto an external hard drive. This setup is usually all in my bedroom so it's not much of a hassle. And then I would take it and put it on my main computer where I edit the videos and I would deinterlace it. That's where I'm going to go next. Really quick, something I forgot to touch on, sorry about that, is that if you have a camera that doesn't have that doesn't have an AV out in the form of composite, you can just plug another cable into that and plug it those composite um, inputs into the VCR here and it'll run through the VCR and everything. And if you're interested in using this computer in particular, this is an HP Pavilion A1730N, and it is slightly modified. It does have a different hard drive than what it came with, and I might have a different video card than what it came with. I got this one from, um, I think I got this computer from an estate sale. I don't remember off the top of my head. So, you know, that, that's a great place to find computers, especially ones like this, is estate sales. Sorry in advance for the fan noise in the background. If I don't have this thing running, then it gets to be like in the mid 80s in here. So I kind of have to. All right, so here's an example of a video that needs to be deinterlaced. I have video from a Sony DCR TRV 250. And the program that I use is called AVSP Mod. And I'm going to put a link in the description to another tutorial that you can follow on how to do all of this. And the guy gives some explanations as to what some of these scripts mean. 
basically here's what I had to type in to get the video to do the thing where it's not interlaced anymore. Set MT mode 5 and 3, AVI source. If you're not using a file that's AVI, then you're going to want to use direct show source. The name of the video you want to deinterlace, the audio track, and then QTGMC is very important here. Preset slower, source match 3, lossless 2, eddy threads 1. Distributor, spline 64 resize, which I'm considering not using anymore just because it's kind of it makes the video look kind of stretchy. And then sometimes this program has trouble with videos that are longer than like 10 minutes, so you might want to trim it a little bit. If I remember correctly, 35,964 frames is exactly 10 minutes. So that might help you a little bit. So once you've got that all typed out, then you create a .bat file, which is basically just a notepad document. Type in a bunch of this garbage, uh, the file name of the uh, AVSP mod file, uh, all of this stuff. I'm not. I honestly don't know what half of this means. I followed the tutorial, but and then the location of where you want the deinterlaced video to be, and then the title, and then that's what it's going to do. And you can see this is the video after being deinterlaced is 59.94 frames per second, and so that's how I make videos that look sort of kind of less terrible than they were recorded in. So thanks for watching. Thanks for taking interest in one of my many hobbies. Um, I'll see you in the next test footage video.